Yes, please start. Is it coming in full screen? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. First of all, I thank the organizers, the GMC and the NECSI for uh, inviting me for this talk. I feel a problem with uh, most of the cardiologists and physicians face the, uh, every day. The management of valvular heart disease in pregnancy. This is one part of management of heart diseases in pregnancy. So heart disease complicates pregnancy. Some of the, uh, I mean, divine pregnancies, the result of uneventful pregnancy, divine outcome. The heart disease and stroke, the number one killer among the women. The, some of the important facts, but I cannot see the timer. The health of the developer, please give me a warning after 10 minutes. Health of the developing fetus is predominantly determined by the health of the mother. However, the safety of the mother is of highest priority. Do, do not ignore the fetus. Drugs, diagnostic studies, and surgery should be avoided during pregnancy as far as practicable. Heart disease is the second most common cause of maternal death after suicide in Western countries. The pregnancy is complicated by maternal diseases in one to four percent of cases. CVDs are still the most common causes of maternal death in Europe and the Western world. There are three connections between the pregnancy and heart-related problems. The pregnant heart patient, a heart disease present in a lady who became pregnant. Second is gestational heart-related problems. The pregnancy has cause some of the heart diseases like pregnancy induced hypertension, gestational diabetes, peripartum cardiomyopathy, etc. And third one is the congenital heart diseases that could develop in the fetus because the mother has congenital heart defect and that is uh, affecting the fetus. Now I will concentrate on the number one, the pregnant heart patient. The pregnancy is a hemodynamic overload. It is a pro-coagulant and pro-thrombotic state. It is pro arrhythmic state. So most of the problems are related to these physiologies. We know that deep vein thrombosis is also common in pregnancy that leads to embolism. The thromboembolism is more common in some of the congenital defects, dilated uh, atrium, arrhythmia, etc. Now, <clears throat> the pregnant heart patient, the heart disease may be present in that particular lady, which may be manifest or may not manifest. She may have mild symptom or may not have symptom, or she may have be symptomatic already, diagnosed case or undiagnosed case. The, our duty is to diagnose and to anticipate the complications and to manage the complications during the and pregnancy delivery and postpartum period. Pregnancy is, a, as I said, is a hemodynamic overload. In a lady who was tolerating the heart problem, say, for example, valvular heart disease during the uh, non-pregnant state. After pregnancy, because there is tremendous increase in the uh, blood volume, the plasma volume, stroke volume, the cardiac output, a mild or moderate type of defect that was asymptomatic now becomes symptomatic. The heart diseases can be classified according to the risk, maternal risk, low risk, 0 to 1%, medium, 5 to 15%, high risk, the 25 to 50%. The highest risk patients are the severe MS, severe AS, symptomatic, the pulmonary hypertension, the Eschenmenza syndrome, aortic coarctation with valvular involvement, Marfan's with aortic involvement. Pregnancy is a hemodynamic overload, pro-coagulant, pro -coagulant, pro thrombotic, and pro arrhythmic. I repeat, cardiovascular adaptation during pregnancy. Pregnancy is an altered physiological state. The significant hemodynamic abnormalities occur, overload, the blood volume doubles, heart rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output rises by 40%. The red cell volume rises, but there is relative hemodilution causing uh, anemia of pregnancy. So peripheral vascular resistance, diastolic blood pressure uh, falls, causing widening of the pulse pressure, the collapsing pulse, the at, from the six week of intrauterine, I mean, uh, uh, pregnancy, then gradually this uh, um, hemodynamic changes occur. And at the end of the second trimester, maybe around 20 to 30 weeks of gestation, there is maximum uh, volume overload. 
and during CS or needing normal delivery also the intubation, extubation, the drugs, the blood loss and abdominal surgery, all that lead to the overloading of the heart. And this diagram shows the cardiac output rises, the heart rate rises, the stroke volume rises, systolic blood pressure rises, diastolic blood pressure rises, but less peripheral resistance decrease and hemoglobin concentration decreases. Though there is rise in the RBC uh, uh, count, but there is relative hemodilution causing anemia of pregnancy. The plasma volume rise is disproportionate to that of the whole blood and erythrocyte uh, increase. Systolic blood pressure and cardiac output rises, but diastolic blood pressure and peripheral vascular resistance decreases. A critical period is maximum sense, as I said, 20 to 30 weeks of gestation. Intrapartum, during each uterine contraction, the stroke volume and blood pressure rises. Just after expulsion of the baby and the placenta, there is squeezing of blood to the maternal circulation. Peripheral fluid is uh, reabsorbed to the circulation. And thereby, uh, there is in sudden increase in the intravascular volume within one hour from the delivery of the baby. The second up to second week purpurium, there is maximum risk of infection, thromboembolism, etc. Pregnancy changes mimic the cardiac diseases. So I will not go into details that because in normal pregnancy also there is some edema, there is breathlessness, um, particularly in the primaries. There may be a systolic murmur of grade one on two, not more than three. There may be memory shuffle, displacement of the apex bit upward. Assessment of heart disease in pregnancy, before pregnancy, during pregnancy, before pregnancy, yes, we have to um, uh, evaluate the patient if possible and during early pregnancy and follow up. Symptoms and signs of pregnancy, the heart murmurs, I'll skip this. Some of the symptoms mimic the heart diseases, supine hypotension syndrome, because of paucity of time, I will not go into the normal things. Only thing that in normal and uh, abnormal conditions during pregnancy, the severe progressive dyspnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, syncope and exertion, effort <coughs> or emotional chest pain, severe peripheral edema, clubbing and sinusitis, persistent neck bendition, cardiomegaly, four heart sound, grade three or more systolic murmur, the sustained arrhythmia, these are the signs of heart disease in pregnancy. The preconception counseling, that is important. The, considering the presence of heart disease, which is already treated surgically or some balloon dilatation or medically treated patients, we will have to explain that what is the risk carried uh, during the pregnancy. If the patient needs a valve replacement before pregnancy, suppose in a um, young lady, then we will have to talk to them that the bioprosthetic valve is better Though it has a longer, dur a lesser durability, but bioprosthetic do not require long lifelong anticoagulation. So during pregnancy, the problem related to the anticoagulation can be avoided. Soil or the seed, which is more important. Maternal and fetal outcome depend on the nature of the disease, the severity, the degree of sinus and hypoxia, pulmonary venous and arterial hypertension, the functional status, the unfavorable outcomes are CHF, hypertension, and arrhythmias. Fetal risk of congenital malformation, abortion, IUGR, prematurity, and perinatal mortality. This is the SCCHA guideline for protocol for preconception counseling. Classification of heart disease according to the maternal risk group one to or the WHO has defined class one, two, three, four. I will come in, into the, the next slide. This is the WHO classification. Class one to class four. These are the milder diseases which has less complication, like the pulmonary stenosis, PDA, mitral valve prolapse, or uh, PDA, ASD, VSD, as a isolated atrial or ventricular ectopic. These are the least uh, risky. And the class four, the WHO class four, the severe mitral stenosis, severe symptomatic aortic stenosis, pulmonary arterial hypertension, severe left ventricular dysfunction, EF less than 30%, history of peripartum cardiomyopathy. That is important. Once there is peripartum cardiomyopathy, no further pregnancy is allowed. Uncorrected severe coarctation, Marfan syndrome with uh, biotic root diameter more than 40. These are the very high risk situation, class four situation. 
the WHO classification, these are elaborated in one by one slide. There are some other severity risk scoring system like the Zahara risk score, the Carpeg to risk predictors. These are all the clinical and anatomical, um, almost like the WHO classification. In general, the lesions which benefit from low peripheral lesions like ARMR, whatever may be the severity with normal left ventricular ejection fraction, they do better. And the left to right shunt without pulmonary hypertension, they are well tolerated during pregnancy. Mild false stenosis, cardiomyopathy with ejection fraction of 45% or more is well tolerated. High risk conditions are severe MS, severe symptomatic AS, prior cardiac event or arrhythmia, poor ventricular uh, functional class, sinusis, LVOT obstruction, the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, LV systolic dysfunction, and pulmonary arterial hypertension. Now let us talk about the few of the uh, situations like mitral stenosis, HCM, prostate valve, Marfan, Turner, CADR. So as I have to uh, limit my talk on, with the valvular heart disease, the mitral stenosis is the most common valve disease managed during pregnancy. Increased hemodynamic load and tachyarrhythmia precipitates pulmonary edema. Management includes the physical rest, diuretics, docosas towards the last, uh, the last part of pregnancy. There is hemoconcentration. So that time diuretics should be restricted. The beta blockers, anticoagulation for yeah. AF, DC cardioversion. Huh? If PTMC or balloon dilatation uh -huh. is needed, that has to be done after 16 weeks to avoid the fetal loss. And not at the last part of pregnancy, again, that will uh, that, uh, impose a risk of miscarriage. MVR, if necessary, who, those who are not suitable for PTM, mitral valve balloon dilatation, mitral valve replacement may be needed if essential, but it carries a high fetal risk of 20 to 30 percent. Vaginal delivery is preferred with epidural anesthesia. Assisted second stage. Second stage should be cut short. CS delivery is reserved only for obstetrical oh, indications. So in patients of mitral stenosis, say mild, moderate, or severe mitral stenosis, the risk of heart failure in mild, moderate, and severe rises, like arrhythmia, mild, moderate, severe hospitalization. So my, as the severity of mitral stenosis, goes uh, towards the higher side, then complication mm -hmm. rate is higher. Second uh, one is the aortic stenosis, the highest risk in severe areas with aortic root di di diameter more than 50 in case of Marfan more than 45. AS severity generally increases after pregnancy, during uh, repeated pregnancy. Rest, the causes use of diuretic, the main model of treatment, the vasodilator um, should be avoided if needed, balloon valvuloplasty, not surgery. Delivery again, vaginal delivery is preferred. Care should be taken to avoid sudden drop in preload and systemic vascular resistance in aortic stenosis. AR and MR, whatever may be the severity, the regurgitant lesions are better tolerated. They are well tolerated even if severe due to fall in the systemic vascular resistance and blood pressure. LVF during pregnancy can well be managed with diuretic vasodilators like hydrolysis, nitrates, and avoiding hypotension. AC inhibitors and ARBs, as all of you know, are absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy. Again, pulmonic stenosis also well tolerated. Pulmonary regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation are usually well tolerated. The prosthetic valve and anticoagulation, this is one important aspect. Many of the patients are with prosthetic valve. The main problem of prosthetic valve is anticoagulation and the risk of infective endocarditis. Increased hemodynamic load, pregnancy, as I said, is a, itself is a hypercoagulable state, increased thrombobolic event, teratogenic effect of anticoagulants, particularly warfarin, heparins, and low molecular heparin, they do not cross the placenta because of large molecular size, so they are preferred. The bioprosthetic valves are best choice, though there is accelerated valve degeneration. Mechanical valve causes 10% risk of thrombosis and thromboembolism, maternal mortality, the major bleeding. Warfarin is related to an embryopathy risk of miscarriage and stillbirth. So at planning pregnancy, the anticoagulation management during pregnancy, the anticoagulants should be changed to heparin up to 13 weeks. 
so in the second and third trimester till uh, say one or two weeks before delivery the oral anticoagulant can be continued but in the first trimester say up to 13 weeks of pregnancy that it has to be covered by heparin and again heparin it has to be changed to heparin just uh, two days prior to planning vaginal delivery or planned cesarean delivery stop heparin at the onset of labor and uh, reinstitute 12 to 24 after delivery but you should not forget that after delivery there is a severe hypercoagulose restart or oral anticoagulant after 24 hours overlapping with heparin Anticoagulant regimens, different combinations and permutations with heparin and low molecular heparin can be given. PTINR should be maintained above two. So I'm not tying, uh, yeah, I'll go first. The risk of the mother and the fetus related to VK only, the high dose VK, low dose VK combination therapies, the risk to the mother and risk to the fetus is always there. Even with good uh, INR maintenance during pregnancy, the risk of uh, thrombosis and embolism is uh, the another important aspect is antibiotic prophylaxis for infective endocarditis, not during pregnancy, but uh, before uh, delivery, vaginal or uh, cesarean delivery. It should be there. The cardiac drugs that are unsafe in pregnancy, we must remember is inhibitor ARBs, the nitroprusside, the amiodarone. The statin group of drugs are also to be avoided in pregnancy. So with this, I think I will come to the last part of my presentation. These are a list of drugs. Most of the drugs are safe, as I said, uh, except few. These are contraindicated. Now, thank you. Thank you for your presence hearing. Over to you.